Thank you. Thank you very much. Good morning. Welcome. Glad you're here with us, worshiping with us live on this Confirmation Sunday. So let us join our hearts in prayer. Dear God, we ask that you quiet our minds and still our hearts. And let us listen for the quiet, still voice as you speak to us everywhere and at any time. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Good morning. If you'll please rise in body and spirit and join in singing our opening hymn number 605. It can be found in your order of worship or in your hymnal. Wash, O God, our sons and daughters. Let us sing together. Let us join our hearts in silent prayer. Oh God, you are a home throughout the generations. As the psalmist says, you are our eternal home, and you are with us throughout our lives. You graciously guide us through the years and through each transition. At birth, you were there in infant baptism, then in holy matrimony, and when we are done, there is a service of resurrection. You are faithful through each transition in life. And today we celebrate the transition of young folks into adulthood. Today we celebrate as these young folks become adults and make a pro profession of their own faith, one of their own free will, an expression of your great love and grace and plan for each one of them. So we give you thanks and praise as they make the greatest decision we can make in our adult life. Let each one realize your knowledge of them and love for them. Your word says you know even the number of hairs on their head. And that you have a plan for each person, for each one of them, where they will go, what they will do, who they may marry, or they may not, but in all things, your will works itself out. That nothing we can do ever will separate us from your grace and forgiveness. So help each one in this room realize the most important thing in life over all other things is a relationship with you to walk with you, to talk with you, to let you guide each step and each breath. 
All this we ask in the name of the one who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you. All right. This is a very special day. As Alan mentioned, it's a service of confirmation. One of the most important decisions these confirmands can make in their adult life, and we've come to celebrate, and what a crowd this is. At first I thought it was Christmas Eve or something. This is great. But we are, are thrilled to, to be part of this and to be part of their lives. Uh, confirmation, if you're a visitor here and you don't know what confirmation is, it's a time in a young person's life where they're ready to make their own decision of being a follower of Jesus Christ. It's not their parents' decision. It's not their pastor's decision. It's not their friend's decision. It's their decision today to be a follower of Christ. And I can't think of any greater decision that's, that's made. So now we begin the service of confirmation and baptism. And I'm going to ask Reverend Brittany to uh, start us off. Very good, and I will ask the confirmands to stand where they are at this moment, and please be prepared for this one-hour oral exam. Let us begin. <laughs> no, just kidding. It's just going to be 30 minutes. Um, no, and as you stand, I, I want to take this moment to, to thank Reverend Brittany and the volunteers, the Friends in Faith who took part in this process of confirmation, which took a couple years because of COVID. But thank you. Let's give them a hand for all those who worked in confirmation. Yeah. All right, confirmation. So now come the questions. On behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression, and whatever forms they present themselves? Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in his grace, and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church, which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races. Now, according to the grace given to you, will you remain faithful members of Christ's holy church and serve as Christ's representatives in the world? Now before you in your 
proclaim the good news and live according to the example of Christ. We will surround these persons with a community of love and forgiveness that they may grow in their trust of God and be found faithful in their service to others. We will pray for them that they may be true disciples who walk in the way that leads to life. And to all gather, let us join together in professing the Christian faith is contained in the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. You may be seated. And now we have a baptism. Uh, again, this is a service of baptism and confirmation. And today we have Kinley who's going to come forward and be baptized as she goes through again the process of confirmation. I'm going to say a prayer over the water. Let's pray. We thank you, Almighty God, for the water of baptism. In it, we are buried with Christ in his death. By it, we share in his resurrection. And through it, we are reborn by the same Spirit. Therefore, in joyful obedience to your Son, we bring to this those who come to him in faith. Lord, I pray, pour out your Holy Spirit to bless this water and those who receive it, to wash away their sins and clothe them in righteousness throughout their lives, that dying and being raised with Christ, they may share in his final victory to him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Karen, Olivo, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And Lord, I ask that you be with Karen, and as she is baptized and experiences your amazing grace, you would come to know fully, especially on this day, that she is a true child of yours, and she received the blessings and the healing and the empowerment of what that means to her and her future. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thanks, Kinley. Let's give Kinley a hand. All right. Very good. And now I will ask all the confirmands to please come forward. And as you do, I know typically when we have Confirmation Sunday, when we go through each confirmand, we invite the, the family and friends and whoever is here to support them to come forward. But because of obvious restrictions and COVID, we're simply going to ask that as we come to the confirmand that you're a family member of or support, that you would stand where you are. Yeah, if we could have each of these filled there, that'd be great. All right. (laughs) 
Again, I was kidding about the oral exam. Y'all can, y'all can come forward. <laughs> All right, we begin with Graham Miller, Forney. What, what a great head of hair you got, Graham. <laughs> I saw you sitting down over there. At first I thought you were Nathan. And then I looked at your face. No, he's much younger than Nathan. All right. Graham Miller, Forney, remember your baptism and be thankful. Graham, the Holy Spirit work within you that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Brandon, remember your baptism and be thankful. Brandon, Powell, Stahlheim, the Holy Spirit work within you that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Jackson Lane Seabold, remember your baptism and be thankful. Jackson, the Holy Spirit work within you, that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Delilah Ray Rivers, remember your baptism and be thankful. Delilah, the Holy Spirit work within you that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Olivia Ella Bates, remember your baptism and be thankful. Olivia, the Holy Spirit work within you, that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Alana Jordan Bricely, remember your baptism and be thankful. Alana, the Holy Spirit work within you, that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Allison Catherine Redding, remember your baptism and be thankful. Allison, the Holy Spirit work within you that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Alexandra Margaret Gray, remember your baptism and be thankful. Alexandra, the Holy Spirit work within you, that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Sarah Cleone Wilton, remember your baptism and be thankful. Sarah, the Holy Spirit work within you, that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Maya Caroline Cunningham, Remember your baptism and be thankful. Maya, the Holy Spirit work within you that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen.
Tinsley, Roja, Hinton, remember your baptism and be thankful. Tinsley, the Holy Spirit work within you, that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Sawyer, Ann, Shoanak, remember your baptism and be thankful. Sawyer, the Holy Spirit work within you, that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Madigan, Hope, Kirstead, remember your baptism and be thankful. Madigan, the Holy Spirit work within you, that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Sanders, Thomas Templeton, remember your baptism and be thankful. Sanders, the Holy Spirit work within you, that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Robert Parks Harris, remember your baptism and be thankful. Robert, the Holy Spirit work within you, that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. John Cameron McComb, remember your baptism and be thankful. John, the Holy Spirit work within you, that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Emmett Charles Andrews, remember your baptism and be thankful. Emmett, your, the Holy Spirit work within you, that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Jackson Burr Luskin, remember your baptism and be thankful. Jackson, the Holy Spirit work within you, that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Cole Robert Champney, remember your baptism and be thankful. Call the Holy Spirit work within you, that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Patrick Otis de Cesaro. Remember your baptism and be thankful. Patrick, the Holy Spirit work within you, that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Samuel, Paul, Ryan, remember your baptism and be thankful. Samuel, the Holy Spirit work within you, that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. 
Amanda, Helen, Pavlov, remember your baptism and be thankful. Amanda, the Holy Spirit work within you, that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Caroline Lee Green, remember your baptism and be thankful. The Holy Spirit work within you, that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Grant Paul Gibson, remember your baptism and be thankful. Grant the Holy Spirit work within you, that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Henry, Paul, Phil, remember your baptism and be thankful. Henry, the Holy Spirit work within you, that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. William Harrison Turner, remember your baptism and be thankful. William, the Holy Spirit work within you, that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Kenley Elizabeth Olivo, remember your baptism and be thankful. Kenley, the Holy Spirit work within you, that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Bren Ellison McCullough, remember your baptism and be thankful. Bren, the Holy Spirit work within you that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Ava Marie McCullough, remember your baptism and be thankful. Ava, the Holy Spirit work within you, that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Rebecca Grace O'Neill, remember your baptism and be thankful. Rebecca, the Holy Spirit work within you, that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Riley Ann Phillips, remember your baptism and be thankful. Riley, the Holy Spirit work within you, that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Kirkland Grady O'Neill, remember your baptism and be thankful. Kirkland, the Holy Spirit work within you, that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Caden Douglas England, remember your baptism and be thankful. Caden, the Holy Spirit work within you, that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. 
Camille, Faith, England, remember your baptism and be thankful. Camille, the Holy Spirit work within you that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. And as you return to your uh, seats, I ask you to stand once again. So I ask you, as members of Christ's Universal Church, will you be loyal to Christ through the United Methodist Church and do all in your power to strengthen its ministries? If you do, say, I will. And as members of this congregation, will you faithfully participate in its ministries by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness? And as you remain standing, I ask the congregation at this time, members of the household of God, I commend these persons to your love and care. Do all in your power to increase their faith, confirm their hope, and perfect them in love. We will, will by the grace of God. All right, let's give them a hand. Very good, and you'll actually find a, a pledge card taped under your pew at your spot. No, we're so proud of you, we really are. This is a great day. Congratulations. Congratulations, welcome. Like Charlie said, don't forget about giving. Um, next Sunday, Natalie, where are you at? I saw you come in, did you already leave? No. She will take 400, there she is, hey. Uh, she and Chris will take 400 bags down to Trinity Table to help feed the homeless. And our next project is we are helping a local Girl Scout troop uh, buy deodorant. These, these deodorants will be put into backpacks in the backpack ministry and given out to the homeless. So the, the bins are in the back where they always are and in the portico. Just drop some deodorant in there. Who among us have not enjoyed Girl Scout cookies? I mean, I can give a personal witness to that, okay. So, uh, girls, I pledge to you, I'll bring you as much deodorant as, as cookies I've eaten. So, help out the Girl Scouts. Let us return thanks. Dear God, we give you thanks for every opportunity to show you a sign and a symbol of our love. In Christ's name, amen. I will joyfully sing in the morning, I will joyfully sing all the day. I'll sing praises to thee in the morning, for the Lord is the strength of my day. I will lift up my eyes in the morning, for the Lord will not turn me away. I'll sing praises to thee in the morning, for the Lord is the strength of my day. 
Let us be in an attitude of prayer together. Lord, we're thankful for the power of your spirit that is clearly in this place today when such sacred decisions are made for you. Lord, may it inspire all of us here to recommit ourselves to you and the church, a world that so desperately needs our witness and the church's strength. And now, Lord, you've given me the amazing privilege and responsibility of preaching your word to these, my friends, and your servants. Lord, a task that I do not take lightly, but it's a task I cannot do on my own strength. I shudder at the fact, Lord. So I need your spirit to do it. So, Lord, speak to me and through me in such a way that all of us receive a word from you that will make a difference to our lives. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. When I was a teenager, my mom would often say a couple of things to me before I went out with friends. The first one was, make good choices. The second one I'll get into a little bit later. But first, I want to talk about this issue of choices, the importance of choices. Because the truth of the matter is, the choices you make today will determine your tomorrow. I don't need to tell you that life is simply a matter of choices. When you get down to it, life is a matter of choices. What we choose to eat for breakfast, how we choose to handle a situation at work, what we choose to feel is important to us, who we choose to follow, and what we choose to follow. We make these kinds of choices every day. And to be honest, there are some choices that aren't really that important. But... I underscore today on this very special day that there are some choices that are vitally important. They determine the quality of our relationships and the quality of our lives. They determine our destiny. Some choices are destructive and some choices are constructive. There are some choices that bring healing and wholeness and there are other choices that wreck our lives. And today is a high holy day. It's a very sacred day in the life of the church. It's a day when young people make the most important decision of their life. To follow Jesus Christ. I can't think of a more important decision. And you confirmands who have made that decision today, As I signed your certificate this weekend, I prayed for each and every one of you, thinking about your decision and how proud I am of you and thinking about the implication of your decision and how it will affect your other decisions in your life and how it will affect your destiny and your purpose. The choices you make today, the choices that we make today will determine our tomorrow. And to be honest, the Bible has many lessons, of course, about making right choices. But there is one passage in particular I want to lift up today that has really spoken to my heart through the years. And they come from the lips of Moses. It comes from Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 19. Moses was delivering the covenant to the people of Israel, the very covenant that God had given to him. And it was a tough message. But Moses felt compelled to give it because there was a great deal at stake. In fact, the survival of the people of God was at stake. And so in the midst of his sermon, Moses would say these words. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you, that I have set before you life and death. Therefore, choose life that both you and your seed may live. Moses was calling them to a decision. It was time to decide. The people of God at this moment couldn't walk on both sides of the fence anymore. They had to make a decision. They could choose life or they could choose death. They could choose to continue to to worship idols or they could worship the living God. The choice was theirs. And confirmands, I am so proud of you because today you have truly made a wise choice to follow Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And the implication of that decision 
is mind-boggling. I mean, uh, in many ways, you can't really predict how awesome and overwhelming that decision really is. And this decision you've made today, it is not your parents' decision. It is not your friend's decision. It is not your pastor's decision. It is not Reverend Brittany's decision. It's your decision because you're at an age when you're learning one of the most important lessons in life and listen very closely. Each of us must live with the choices that we make. And I want you to remember that the next time you're tempted. Young people today, I want to speak directly to you, but of course this is a word for all of us. Many of you are going on to high school. Some of you young people are going off to college. And yes, you will be tempted. You will be tempted to make bad choices. You will be tempted to do the wrong thing. And oftentimes when that happens, you'll hear people say, well, you know what, it's really not a big deal anymore. Everybody's doing it. It's really not a problem. Why are you making such a big deal about it? And when that happens, I want you to remember this. That may be true, but the person who's talking to you, the person who's giving you peer pressure, does not have to live with the consequences of your decision. Only you live with the consequences of your decisions in life. Only you are responsible for your decisions, for your actions. The choices we make today will determine our tomorrow. Now, I want you to imagine something for me. Imagine that your life is over. Your life is finished. And you're escorted into a room that has two chairs and a big screen. One chair is for you and the other chair is for God. Now imagine for a moment that God walks into the room with a remote control in his hand. And he sits down next to you and he draws your attention to the screen and he pushes a button and on that screen are the words what might have been. I want you to imagine for a moment on that screen what might have been in your life if you had trusted God with decisions. Imagine what God might have done in your life if you had trusted your resources to him. Imagine what God might have done with your skills and your talent if you had simply trusted him. Imagine what God might have done in your life if you had confronted sin and yielded to his grace. Now imagine that on the screen. Now I don't believe God is going to make us watch a video like that. I certainly hope not. And I haven't told you to do this exercise today to to make you wallow in self-defeat, but I have asked you to do this particular exercise to reinforce again, not just to the confirmands, but to every one of us here, that the choices we make today will determine our tomorrow. So where do you want to be in life? Where do you want to go? What kind of choices do you want to make? If you want to be a healthy person, well, that means you're going to have to make some choices about what you eat, about what you do with your body. If you want to have a healthy spiritual life, that simply means you're going to have to make some choices about what you choose to read, what you choose to digest, what you choose to look at. Maybe your goal is to have a healthy family and a healthy marriage again. That means you're going to have to make some choices about what is a priority in your life and what is not a priority in your life. The choices we make today will determine our tomorrow. And make no mistake about it, this day and why it's so holy and why it's so sacred is because it's about a huge choice. The choices we make today will determine our tomorrow. And what has been a common thread throughout today's service is this. The highest choice, the most important choice for all of us is whether or not we will follow Jesus Christ. That's what it comes down to. Confirmands, you've made that decision. 
and you've been grafted into the body of Christ. This day is about, this worship service is about our loyalty to Jesus Christ and being his follower in this world that so desperately needs our witness and our light and the church's witness and light. And I think about the state of this world and I think about you confirmands and what you could do in the future with this decision you have made, the influence you could have, the influence you will have right now. My mom often would remind me by the second thing that she said when I went out with friends about this decision that I made, confirmands. She would say to me, remember who you are. Not only remember that I'm Charlie Reeve and I'm a Reeve and all of that, but most importantly, she was saying to me, remember that you are a follower of Jesus Christ. And may what you say, may how you behave and how you treat people reflect that. Cornelius Vanderbilt in his day was probably one of the the richest people, the most successful people. And one time he was walking through some woods and he was worried about his life. He was sick about things in his life, his heart was really heavy, and he got lost. He got totally disoriented in the woods. And so out of desperation, he he sat down next to a tree and leaned against it and, and fell asleep. Well, moments later, he was awakened by somebody kicking his feet. And when he opened his eyes, he looked up at a big bear of a man with a big black beard who was the forest ranger. And the forest ranger looked down at him and said, who are you and where are you going? And Vanderbilt said those words and those questions were like ice water to my mind, he said. It cleared out all the confusion. And I offered that man, that forest ranger, a job right on the spot. He didn't take it. But I offered him to fly back with me to the city and every day wake me up with those two questions. Who are you and where are you going? There is a lesson in that for all of us, don't you think? In fact, I would say to you that it's critical we ask those two questions whenever we make an important decision. In fact, I would rephrase the questions. Who do you want to be? And where do you want to go? If you choose to be a follower of Jesus Christ, you want to follow his lead. But like the confirmands today, that is a choice only you can make. The choices we make today will determine our tomorrow. Let's be in an attitude of prayer together. Lord, once again, I I lift up and pray for each confirmand here who has made a life-changing, transformative decision. And may this day, may what they've done this day never fade into their minds. May it be a day they will always remember, the day they chose to follow you. And Lord, the rest of us here who've experienced this, may the inspiration of today, well, inspire us to recommit ourselves to you, to be your followers in this world. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. We're going to sing a a hymn of invitation. And as we do, perhaps you'd like to come forward and and join this church, to join your witness with our witness as we seek to be followers of Christ in this world. We invite you to come as we stand and sing together. Please join in singing number 593, Here I Am, Lord. Again, the words can be found in your order of worship or uh, in your hymnal. We're just going to sing the first stanza today of number 593. Please join.
Thank you. Please be seated for just a moment. More important decisions continue to be made today. This is great. We have a few folks that have come forward to, to join the church today. Uh, to my left here are Lisa and Tom Chambers, and they are joining the church today by transfer of membership from another local church, and uh, we're just thrilled about that. They said they've been visiting for a couple years and uh, felt led to join today, and I can't think of a greater day to do that. So uh, it's wonderful. And of course, to my right, we have the, the Haneys here, and we're just thrilled that uh, y'all are joining. Christopher, uh, Lance Haney, you're joining us today. And, uh, and so we're just thrilled that you're doing that and you're joining by profession of faith. Is that right? And, uh, and so because of that, I just have a few questions I want to, to ask you as you come forward to join the day. And that is, do you reaffirm your faith in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? And do you and will you Support this church with your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness. I knew you'd say that. And congregation, if you would receive these wonderful folks into this fellowship of faith, would you give a hearty amen? amen. All right. Well, we're just thrilled. I know the church will mean much to you as you mean much to the church. And uh, I invite you to stand for the benediction now. benediction. And now may that mind that was in Christ Jesus be in you also. May the love of God, our Heavenly Father, abide with you this day and through this week. May the guidance and power of the Holy Spirit fall fresh upon you. And the faith and fellowship of all true disciples of Jesus Christ go with you and sustain you both now and forevermore. Amen.